from around here, huh? No, sure don't. Morning, gentlemen. Well, what do you want? We're here to get some bait. We're gonna do some fishing. Yeah, well, we never seen you around these parts before. What are you talking about? You come in my shop. Yeah, well, I've never seen you around here. You look familiar. Isn't that guy's name Scruffy? Didn't you fix a garden scratcher for him one time, Pa? Yeah. Some other stuff? We fish at this Podunk Lake all the time. Well then, you're gonna want to beware of the legend, right? <laughs> oh yeah. What legend? The legend of pond scum. Oh, that's an old wives' tale. Well, I don't think so. He's real. Yeah, we saw him, right? Didn't we? Yep, I've seen him. Yeah. That's an urban legend. There's no such thing. There's no creature out there. What does he look like? He's real. He's not real. It's an urban legend. Now get out of our way. Yeah. We're here to get some bait. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> Uh, something tells me pond scum's gonna be a, making a little appearance today. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You might be, huh? Oh yeah. Come on, let's get out of here. Whoa. Kinda dry out here, Pa. Yeah, well that'll make it easier for us to catch fish. Yeah, I guess you're right there. Oh, I got some seaweed. I think I got me an old tire. There's something over there moving. Where? Right over there. Straight ahead. See it? I don't see anything. It was probably just a deer. What are you buying into that pond scum legend? Ah! Ah! You see that? That was what I was telling you about. There it goes. Maybe we should go after it. All right, yeah. Sounds good. You go first, I'll follow your lead. That thing's gotta be out here somewhere, Pa. Yeah, I can smell them. It smells like pond scum. Yeah, you're right, it does. All right, Junior, you go that way, and I'll go this way, and maybe we'll circle around and catch them. All right, sounds good. Pond scum, where you at, bud? I know you're out here. I can smell ya. <laughs> Reveal yourself. Yo, P.S., where you at? Hello, Pasco. Pasco. Pterodactyl here. And today's video is going to be on this 1959 Clinton chainsaw. That's right. This is a Clinton chainsaw that we got from Terrell fans. Let me see. Rodney and Vicky from South Haven, Michigan. So about over a year ago, I show up at the shop and this thing's sitting in front of the door. And I thought, huh, I already got a boat anchor. <laughs> so let's see if we can get this turd to run. So let me tell you what I found out about it. It's a Clinton D65. It's six horsepower or 5.78 cubic inches, 94.7 cc's. It's got a half inch chain on it. Look at the size of them teeth on there. You thought I had some big teeth. I'll tell you, I can chew through some wood too. Let's see if this thing can chew through some wood faster than me. It runs between 45 and 4,800 RPM. That's not very fast. So I'm sure it's a slow cutter. And it takes a J8J or J8C spark plug. This power head without the bar and chain, 23 pounds. You imagine lugging this thing around back in the day? And it's made out of lightweight aluminum. 
or aluminum, as you say, over there across the pond. And it's not that light. 23 pounds, that's without the bar and chain. So figure that bar and chain probably weighs about another five or six pounds. Look at that muffkin. Look at that muffkin on that thing. Look at it. It's just a horn. And it had some kind of cover on it. So I'm sure this is an ear piercer. It's got a manual oiler. Which this is all dry rotted away. I'm sure you can't get that part. But it does sound like it works. Alright, listen over here. Can, can you listen with that camera? Hear that? Sounds like it's working. All right, so let's take a pixie inside the oil tank. Okay, so cap, and this came off. This is all uh, shrunken. There we go. I don't know if the cameraman can see in there, but there's some some garbage in the oil tank. Not a lot. Can clean it out of there. And this is the fuel tank. Can you see in there? There doesn't appear to be a lot of crap in there either. Now there is a hose with a fuel filter. I think I can rinse out what's in there. It's still kind of liquefied. So here's the fuel line which is still pliable and it's got a fuel filter on the end which I'm sure is plugged up it looks like it's pretty plugged now there's also the oil line in here which has got like a filter on the end but it's kinda hard hard as a carp I want to be careful I don't want it to, to break on me so I'm gonna gingerly try to take that off Remember Ginger Lee? Look, it even says oil on it. So this is a little filter. So we'll leave that out. And we'll try to clean that up. So of course, the first thing we're going to want to do is see if it's got compression, which it feels like it does, because I can hear that thump, thump. And it feels like it's got it. Because I have compression compression gauge hands. Just from pulling on these things over the years, I can tell. I don't need no stupid compression tester. Put a compression tester on there, Tara, so we can see how much compression it's got. Yeah, right here. Here's the compression tester. See it? Alright, so it feels like it's got compression. Next thing we want to do... Let's get at the spark plug. Look at this. It's got this little latch. This little cover. Spark plug's loose. And of course, it's the wrong spark plug. Come on out, spark plug. Remember, we did a video and the, the dog's name was Spark Plug. J17LM. Not the right plug. Hi, Claude. It takes a J8C or a J8J. Well, they don't make a J8J anymore. It takes a J8C, so I got a J8C. So let's look at the plug. Oh yeah, look at what a difference. It's a monster plug. All right, so we need to check for spark. So let me get my spark tester. Let me get my Breaks and scrap them one. Let's go old school spark tester. Well, I need a good ground. All right, let's not use that one. Let's use this one. This one's got a, a wire that we can. We want a good ground. Want to make sure we got a good ground. All right, let's see if we. Got any spark? No spark. Okay. Well, subscribe to this YouTube channel, Tara Fix It. No, I'm just bit. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. That's the end of the video. Got no spark. Okay, tune in again.
All right, so no spark. So let's take this cover off, pull the flywheel, and let's access the points and condenser. Because this is so old, it's got points and condenser. So look at this. It's got regular screws in it. No Phillips heads. Here's one down here. And they are in there tight. It's got a Tillotson carburetor on it. And I do have a kit for it. It's an HL Tillotson. There's one in here. So in case we have to put a kit in it, and then over here they got an Allen, an Allen head. Wonder why they call it an Allen head. The guy Allen got his head. Look at you, Allen head. Ugh, that's tight. So if you have any friends that are named Allen, call them Allen head. What's up, Allen head? And they'll be like, why you call me that? Why are you calling me Allen Head? Because that's the name of a, a head of a uh, fastener. And Terrell told me to call you that. Who the heck is this Terrell? And why does he call me Allen Head? Oh, I guess I gotta take this out too. Alright, end of the video. Gotta take another bowl out. All right, get out of the way. Alright, here's our starter Pauls. And it's not Paul like the guy's name, like Paul McCartney, P-A-U-L. It's P-A-W-L, Paul. Like Paul. All right, let's find a socket that fits that nut. Looks like three quarter. <clears throat> Wrong. 11 sixteenths. <clears throat> Wrong. Oh, that's five eighths. 11 sixteenths. Ding, 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 ding. Impacto. Right hand, left hand. We'll find out in a second here. Got it on loose. Right hand threads. All right. I'm gonna put use uh, one of my knockoff tools on there. I think it's the same as Tecumish knockoff tool. So let me get that knockoff tool. All right, so here's a, a Tecumish knockoff tool. You can find these online, it's treaded. I believe this is 7 sixteenths treads. So you thread it on and then back it off one turn and then give it a wrap, not like the wrap handle, give it a wrap. Come on up, Mr. Flywheel. Give it a wrap, sing a rap verse to it that doesn't rhyme because I'm a terrible rapper. I'm more of a raptor. And then it comes right off because it's on a taper. All right. So look at all that nastiness in there. You know what that is? That's old sawdust from 1959, 1960. I'm gonna I'm gonna put that in a in a vial and sell it on the inner screen. 1960, 61 vintage sawdust. Look at that. It's a beautiful thing. All right, so let's take a. Look, see. This looks like a Tacumish coil. Tacumish points, they look like. Looks like the same as those Tacumish points. And condenser, the way it works. And look at this. They would always do this back in the day. I don't know if he could see that. 
points, twenty thousandths, gauge, and a little arrow. So this thing, this little tab here, is actually for setting the points. So if you don't know anything about points, other than the one on my head, you turn the crankshaft until the points open, it gets to the widest point, and that's right here on this cam. You can see this is a lobe. And when I turn it to that spot, that's the widest point, and it opens the points. And look at that fits in there, it's a little loose. A little bigger than 20, but look at they're all nasty. So I'm gonna disconnect all these wires. I'm gonna pull a set of points out. I gotta set it to Cummish points. I'm gonna see if they're the same ones. They might be the same ones. And we'll put a set of points in it. We'll give it a spin, see if we get any spark. I'm sure these points are just dirty. I might be able to sand them, but if we can, we'll put a new set in. All right, sound good? Okay, I got the wires disconnected and I got the screw loose. I think I got a screw loose. Now I'm gonna pop these out of here. Oh yeah, these, these points are cashed in, look at that. Look at them, boy. Somebody really ran this saw a lot. These points are so war, they actually have like an edge on it where they were hammering against each other so much, they actually left a little raised sharp edge all the way around. So I got a new set of old, new old set, new old stock set of the 30547A to Cummish. I like our sticker better. It's got my head on it. Points condenser. I don't like the new ones that you buy, that you order from. If you can get your to Cummish parts, like I get mine from Oscar Wilson. And they're just like a cheaper quality. I like these older school ones. So of course, before I put them in, I'm gonna clean them. So I'm gonna put a little carb spray on there to clean the contacts. And then I like to, uh, like to use a little 400 grit sandpaper. You know, I'm not going crazy with the sanding of them because you know a lot of times they put a little protective coating on there because I want to make sure I'm getting good contact now I'll spray them again and then you should clean them with a with a piece of paper I'm going to use the Rodney and Vicky card yeah see See a little bit of residue come off of there. I still see a little little corner here. I want good contact. Thank you, Rodney and Vicky, for this chainsaw. my shirt, apparel shirt, which you can get in our online store. <laughs> there he goes. There goes our apparel, plugging, plugging his merchandise again. He has no shame. He's a shameless man. You know what else I'm going to do? Is I'm going to clean out this crap in here a little bit. And then I'll take Mr. Q-Tip. There is some nastiness in here. It 
should also oil that wick that's in there, Terrell. You should oil up that points cam wick. Yeah. I'll get right on it. I'll spray a little, a little, little WD-40 on there. Well, right now I'm happy again. I see you do many of these videos and you never address that wick. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull that wick out and I'm going to flip her around. And use the other end. Because that end was a little cleaner. Now I'll stick the points in. Put the screw in. Tighten it down and back it off so I can adjust it. That's what this little slot is in here for. So you can get a screwdriver in there and, and adjust it. I'm already at our widest point. I'm gonna use this points cover because it's already got the built-in. Wipe it off, it's all dirty. It's already got the little built-in gauge on there. Of course, when I snug it, come here, you. Of course, when you snug it down a little bit, it's going to change the gap some. Let me see if I can scooch it over a little. Not a little too tight. Yeah, a little too much. Just want to have a little bit of drag on there. It's easier to do when you ain't got a cameraman hovering over you. That feels good. Oh yeah. A little bit of drag on there. All right. Now we're going to want to clean them again. Since we were sticking dirty tools in there. I'm going to use this post-it. Turn the, turn the crank a little. Ah. Close them up so they're tight. Nice and clean and I always like to give them a snap when they're closed. To make sure they're getting a good bite, good contact. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and hook the wires back up. This one had two nuts on it. A little washer. I don't know. Both these nuts aren't going to fit on here. Where's those old set of points? What I do with them? Yeah. See this stud? This stud is a little bit longer, so they could stack all them nuts on there. It's like me, a stud. So I'm going to put that wire set of wires on, then this cup washer, and then this is the kill wire, and then I'll just put the one nut back on. So we're not going to be able to put it back. If I wanted to put it back to like original, I could always just take this stud out and put it in that set of points, but it's not that critical. You're taking away the originality of it. You should take the time to put that stud on there to keep it original. Yep, because some guy that's a chainsaw collector is going to go, Somebody replaced them points. And they didn't use the longer stud. Let's tear that flywheel off and find out before I buy this saw. Because if it ain't got that long stud on there, deal's off. All bets are off. Mm. 
All right, we're ready to check for sparkage again. You need to replace the condenser. All right, I cleaned the inside of flywheel. I cleaned all this nastiness off. I cleaned off the laminates. Look at how clean, look at, look at it. Not all rusty and shiny. Look at that, it's all nice and shiny, not rusty. That's what I meant to say. Well, if it don't spark, sir, then I'll put a condenser on it. Yeah, well, you're wasting time. Just put the condenser on. Hook up our handy dandy spark tester. And let's take this out of here, stick it in a grill. We don't want to use an impact to spin it over because that's not going to work right. It's going to hammer on it instead of spinning it. Now there is an on off switch. I got to make sure I got it on. It ain't sparking, I told you it's condenser. And it's in the off position. Now it's on. Let's see if we got spark now. I told you, you stupid idiot. No spark. All right, you're right, sir. I told you. Gotta switch this over. May not be the condenser. Might have bad coil. All right, I'm gonna test this condenser because I have a condenser testing tool which I got from super fan Jeremy Fountain the mower medic, you know Jeremy, don't you? You watch his channel, he's the mower medic. Well, he sent me this old school condenser tester. Thank you, Jeremy. Now, a lot of y'all probably don't know this, but Pearl Jam, they're a big fan of mower medic. And they wrote that song, Jeremy. You ever listen to the words? You gotta listen to them close. I'll sing a few bars for you. Jeremy Fountain, Jeremy. Yeah, that was Pearl Jam. They did that. Eddie Vedder, big mower medic fan. All right, so we hook this up. We hook up the two leads, and it tells you to push down on the button three, four times and then hold it for a second and read the scale, the lower scale, which is down here, and right there is one, and if it's lower than one, the condenser is no good. Because we just charged up this condenser. Then you hit this discharge button, and it discharges it. I think Eddie Vedder's got one of these too. Jeremy Fountain, Fountain, Jeremy Fountain. Next time you hear that song, listen to it close. It's written about Jeremy Fountain. Hey, hey, hey. All right, condenser's good. So you know what that means? Coil's bad. So, video's over, ain't got a coil. No, I think I got one up there. Just the Tecumish coil. So I'll go get a new coil. We'll stick it on there. See if we got spark now. All right, I went out in the junkyard because I thought I had a new coil, but I didn't. And uh, grabbed this old snowblower engine I had out there. And we're going to try this coil. 
The hole in the center of these coils, even though they look identical, this one is a lot bigger, this square hole in there. So this isn't gonna work. So that was a bust. Looks the same, but it's not. I did put a new condenser on it, and I think somebody was in here messing around because this wire is supposed to go to ground and it was going to the points. So we tested this condenser and it was good, but I did put a new condenser on anyway, and I routed this wire back to ground like it's supposed to be. I got the original coil back on. Let's put it back together and see if we got spark. Plus I think I was spinning it the wrong way, but off camera, I spun it both ways and it still didn't have any spark. So let's see what happens. Let's put this in the drill. Now I gotta make sure I spin it the opposite way. I gotta spin it this way. That's the curve of the fins. I was spinning it the other way. So let's see if we got spark. Zoom in on there. Whoa! Woo! Woo! All right, a little trial and error, and we got it. Now we got spark. That's the least of our problems, I'm sure. So let me put the cover back on. We'll put a new plug in it. We'll shoot a little dinosaur cocktail in there. And then uh, we'll see if it'll fire it up, fire it up, fire it up. Now that's in my head. He's in my head. Elk skins is in my head and you don't want him in your head. You want him, you know, cause he's dirty. You'll have a dirty head. All right, I got some dinosaur cocktail mixed up here. And I took the air cleaner assembly off. Check out this air filter. This is the air filter. Look at it. It's just a bunch of brass screen rolled up. That's what they use, 1959. I give it a good dose. Switches on. Get ready for a woo, woo, woo. Woo. Not enough. Let me take the choke off. Maybe I wanted it. Pop. Let me hold the throttle open. Oh, I heard something throttle back there. What are you guys doing back there? Doing them noises. Somebody had some pressure built up. Flooded it. Let me rinse out this tank because it's got some carb spray. Get that all rinsed out. I'll put a new tank filter on there. Looks like a 3 16 That's quarter inch. Here's a 3 16 And then we'll put some dinosaur cocktail in there. I doubt if it'll run.
because I'm sure those diaphragms in that carburetor are hard as a carb. Where did I have my jar? Here it is. But you never know. Get all that out. And maybe we could get it started. It's dark out now. I wanted to cut some wood with it. If we ever get it going. It's a lot of work making these videos. Running my shop all day. If I had it my way, I'd just shut this shop down and make nothing but videos. Which is my goal. If you want to visit, you better hurry up. Once I shut her down. It'll be shut down. Shut her down! Alright, what did I do with the gas cap? Look at that fuel filter. That thing's nasty. Where's that gas cap at? What did it do? Hit the ground? Where's that stupid thing? There it is, under that rag. Fuel valves open. Chokes on. I highly doubt this thing's going to run. Maybe I'm wrong. It's gonna run. All right, let's pull the carburetor off. Bam, 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 bam. Okay, I got the carburetor off. Let me blow some of this crap off. Here we go, a little screwdriver slot. There's nastiness. Okay. Hard as carp. Here's our needle and seat. Here's our diaphragm, look at that. Hard as a carp, that ain't gonna pump no fuel. Make that crunching noise. Yeah. All right, so I should have a diagaskin and diaphragm kit right here, Tillotson. Here's the kit. Oop. There's something else sticking to it. Which I got this kit from Stend. 
DG5HL, DG2HL, because it's the HL carburetor. Look at there's our nice new supple, soft and supple. That's moving. The needle moving? Let's find out. Make sure the needle ain't stuck. Get that out. We don't want to lose that spring. That's our needle. It was kind of stuck. It's plastic. Spray through there. Want to get all that nastiness out of there. All right, let's stick it all back together. Let's see if we can get this old turd running again. All right, I got it all sprayed off. Not completely. So looking at this, old one, the gasket goes on top, then the diaphragm. It's got little pins that show it. And then that goes on there. Then this goes on. Then we have another set of little nubs here. And looking at this, got the gasket first. And then our new pump diaphragm isn't made out of rubber. It's made out of this other material, whatever that is. I'm sure somebody out there knows what it is. And we have to get this lined up correctly. There we go. There we go. There you go, Terrell. Then we put this on next. And then this cover. Which went like this. Because we had to line this up with that. Alright. Now I can screw it down. And then under here should be a little screen. Now I did spray this little cover plate off some. I'm just going to tighten a couple of these down. The rest of these have started. Let's take this off. Take a little look-see under here. So you can pivot this. So you can put that in any direction you want. Come on, I don't want to break this. Then the video will be over. There we go. Okay, not too bad. A little cork gasket and there's a screen, like I said, a screen under here. So let's get that stuff out of there, that old fuel. We'll clean the screen. And then here's our new cork gasket for that. A 
Then we can put that back on. And then I'll snug everything down and we'll re reinstall the carburetor. And hopefully this turd will run again. fuel line and the and the pulse line because they're all brittle and hard and now let's see if this turd will start got the choke on got the gas on Woo! Ah, wow. let me open the screws a little bit Try it again. Some, but I did get it running. Let me try it again. Oh, what up? I turned switch on. Set the idle up a smidge. is loud, noisy, heavy, in my uh, opinion, a piece of fecal. Now if it wasn't so dark out, as you can tell by Sean Corbo over there, <laughs> standing next to the windows, we'd take it out and try to chop some wood, but this is crunch time. This is Friday night late, we gotta get this video up for Sunday. This turd took a lot longer than expected, but it does run. I did get it running. So, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Terrell fixes all. I'm Terrell. Polishing another turd. This turd happens to be like a gold color turd. Follow me with your turds. Facebook and Instagram. Go to our web store, buy some of our stuff. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! 1959 Clinton Chainsaw. I wish it was lighter out. We should have started earlier on this. I'm going to cut some wood. Maybe we'll cut some wood in another video. All right, let's fire this turd up again. Check my fishing pole. Right googly moogly. And you got pond scum all over you. Oh, get it off me, it's disgusting. I'm not touching that stuff. There he goes. Yeah. I bet you it's one of them guys from the bait shop. It's personal now, Pa.
I got him. Time to see who it really is. I think it's the guy from the bait shop. Yeah, well, we're going to find out here in a second. It's, 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 it's me, Uncle Andy. What? Uncle Andy? Yeah. You guys know any good fishing spots? Happy Halloween.